So when we pray this, this is to remind us, to make us conscious of, to make us think about, to meditate on the fact of how much we have been give, forgiven. We Let's go back in the things we read. You say, well, have you never heard this? Have you ever shared the gospel with somebody? Who, well, I'm not a sinner. I didn't know. I never killed anybody. Jesus said, well, if you were angry with somebody. He said, well, I never, I never cheated on my wife. I never committed adultery. But Jesus said, well, if you looked on another woman with lust, the heart is deceitful above all else. And I want you to know there is a blackness in the heart of man that came from the death of Adam. And has been transmitted from generation to generation, from generation to generation. And we are born with that stain of sin. Yes. Which is why Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Born of your heavenly Father who has no sin to pass along. You're clean. That stain is washed away. Washed away. Hallelujah. He won't remember your sins. So let me ask you a question. How can you dare, how dare you say you forgave somebody, but you're unwilling to forget what they've done? Well, you say, well, you don't understand. That's hard. I know how hard it is. You think I've not had to experience this? Of course, we all have. We all have Every to. single one of us. But I've learned the secret. I've learned the key to being able to forget the transgression. When somebody has sinned against you, and you choose, and it is a choice, to forgive them, the only way you will ever come to the place where that will never come to your mind anymore when you see them, is to diligently start praying for them. Amen. Do good for them. Isn't this what Paul says in Romans chapter 12? Isn't it? He says, you know, if your enemy, if your enemy does you evil, you, you're supposed to do him good. You're supposed to return good for evil. So what good do you have? You have no greater good than to pray the blessings of God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God upon that person's life. And your heart will change. And it will change you. It will. It will change you. And you can think to yourself perhaps that it doesn't matter a lot because, well, you know, I still, there's still a brother, there's still a sister, I still. I just don't have to fellowship with them. You don't have to fellowship. I want to, I want to tell you something. This unity, and we're going to talk about this in our next program. This unity is one of the greatest schemes, wiles yes. of the devil. Yes. He does it to bring destruction on the church and people in the church. Yes, he does. It says in my Bible, so it's going to say in yours too, unless you have some wacko translation. <laughs> Behold how blessed and becoming it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. How pleasant it is for brothers. To, if you come upon a brother who you've forgiven, but don't forget what they've done to you, it will never be pleasant for you to see them. And if it's not pleasant for you to come into their presence, you know what? It's a sign that you are in disunity. No, it's a sign you don't have unity, because yeah. unity it's is pleasant. pleasant. So if there are brothers and sisters in the Lord that you've had conflict with, and, and you know, you've forgiven them, they've forgiven you, whatever it is, and it's not pleasant for you to be around them. You need to be praying, not necessarily for them. Let a man examine himself. You need to be praying for you. That your heart would be cleansed from that. Yes. God is the font of all good things. He will give you a peace. He will give you that love. For the love of God has been poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit. You need to exercise that love. You need to practice that love. You need to come to the place where you can pray, Father, forgive me the same way I forgave him. Yes. Teach me how to forgive. Oh, wait a minute. He did that. Yes. He did that 2,000 years ago, hanging upon a cross outside of Jerusalem, beaten, whipped, mocked, nailed to a cross, when he said, Father, forgive them. I promise you that if you accepted that great gift of God, He has never once since reminded you of a sin that He had forgiven. It's gone. Oh, what a great love. Oh, what a great love. Please, don't pray this prayer 
without thinking about this prayer. Don't pray about your daily bread without realizing that He gives it and provides it. Don't pray that we forgive like unless you're prepared to do that. I would speak with tongues of men and angels and have not love in my heart. I'm a standing brass or a tinkling cymbal For love suffers.